All right. So if you have any interest in heating your home with coal, uh, this is going to be a good video for you. If you haven't done it before, I'm trying to illustrate. I haven't done it before. This is my first season heating with coal. And if you have any interest in it, it's going to be the video that I'm going to try and I'm going to show you how to get the coal stove lit, um, how it functions, and just kind of guide you through it. Kind of try and give you a little of the, the weird quirks and the theories and the things that I've found uh, to help you have a good coal fire and uh, and make it where it's not frustrating because a lot of people uh you know a lot of people who burn wood uh seem to ah that's a pain in the butt uh, it goes out on you when it goes out and it's a whole big thing which i will agree when it does go out it's kind of a thing it's not it's not like a wood fire where you just a few pieces of newspaper dry piece of wood and you're back in business this is definitely a process this is about an hour long process if it goes out to light it it's about a 15 minute long process it when you service it. I can I can do it in a hurry if I got to. I can be I can be done in five minutes, but I don't have the confidence in the job that I do. If I take the time and I do it it's like a 15 minute service on it and uh, and it really it really seems to uh, to be a little more reliable and I have a little bit more time for it. But it's twice a day normally, three times a day if you're running it real hard. I can get uh, 16 17 hours maybe even 18 uh, under lucky conditions if i'm idling the stove so i can leave the house for a little bit longer and come home and not have to deal with an hour-long relay process but the overall really like it really having uh you know it's, it's interesting it's fun it's a little bit of a challenge at those caveman skills you know keeping a fire going 24 7 never letting it go out and uh and so if you have any interest in any part of that we're going to go through it here in the next couple minutes so thanks all right, welcome to Coal Corner. This is a little piece of my house by the uh, basement access doors that I uh, use for heating the home. And uh, this season, first season, we've been trying to burn coal. And I say the word trying because there's definitely a learning curve to this. And uh, there's not a whole lot of information out there from what I could find other than the old timers. So I figured it's worth, uh, worth doing what I found out here and kind of share my experience with it. So I guess uh, we'll start out and we'll go through some of the uh, the stove and the equipment, things like that. And then I'll show you how to get a fire going in it. And uh, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video with uh, with how, how you maintain this thing and do your best to try and keep the darn thing lit. It's great because it's a lot less work than wood, but uh, it's a little bit trickier to keep it going. So uh, starting up top here, we've got our we got our damper up here closed right now because uh, the stove is cold. It's out. It's been out for a couple days. And uh, open up the lid. That's uh, that's where we're going to feed feed the coal with up in through there. We got our, our access door and, you know, leveling the coal out, that sort of thing. In here is our shaker grate. Our shaker grate is attached to that lever right there outside. And if I mess with that lever you can see what it does if i swing the lever back and forth we got that piece moving in there or I rotate the lever forward and aft it shakes the whole grate around so uh i'm sure you'll see how that works shortly down the bottom we've got our air setting down here and this one goes to 11 and uh inside of that it's just a, a dirty old ash pan and that's where the ash ends up at i've got uh, i got a little bit of um like a, a stove cement on here that uh, that kind of seals the air up at the bottom because if you have too much air going into these things they burn a lot of coal they burn really hot and uh and the goal of this is i try and service it twice a day uh when i run it wide open it turns into having to service it three times a day and um so i got a couple i got my coal hods here this is what came out of the stove when it went out i had trouble sometimes if you don't catch it soon enough it goes out so uh that's the that's cool that's still viable in the center so it's 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 been in the stove it has been red hot before um and this is a little bit harder to light um that's uh that's a p coal in there that i, that I recovered out of the stove and there's the, the stove size coal there and that's the ash that's what that's what that's what it looks like after you got a good burn going on here's my little section of tools we got that handle that removes the the top of the stove which uh got a pot for putting water on top we got to keep the house a little bit humid here is the handle that uh that hooks onto the shaker grate and shakes that got a little little round brush just for sweeping off the sill and some things like that 
uh, little poker kind of thing there. And here's another homemade, this is a homemade tool for, I call it slicing the coal. Um, that, that we won't use that today, but maybe the next video we will. And this is a, a different kind of poker I made up here to, to, uh, to get to stab up through the bottom. And then I got the ash pan shovel there and my torch for lighting. Uh, other stuff I use, I got a pallet, which I chop chunks off of for the, for the starting wood and just some leftover cardboard from the house. So that's pretty much the, the stuff of the equipment I've got down here. And uh, let's uh, let's go through starting a fire in this thing. All right, well, we're cleaned out, we're empty. Uh, I like to put a little bed of, uh, of some of the smaller coal down into the stove to give uh give ourselves something to work on something, something that's going to plug it up just a little a little something to put in there that uh our let's see we just about a little bit more about to put, in, put the rest of that in there okay so flatten it out and we've got the whole bottom of it covered in there. And I'll try and give you a view of that. So, just got a little layer in the bottom right now, a couple different size chunks of coal, and then we're gonna build our cardboard and wood fire on top of that. So, nothing fancy, just <laughs> little cereal boxes, get them in there. We gotta make sure we put the lid back on the top, of course. And as we place, we gotta make sure that we open up our damper. Our damper is now wide open. I don't, I don't fuss with that much. And we're gonna, we're gonna give it air. I don't like to start out with too much cardboard at once because I don't want to shock the stove with too much heat. I'm going to start this fire out a little bit slowly and just let it kind of build up, but ultimately it's going to turn into a pretty darn hot fire. So overall, this uh, getting the stove to be to the point where I can walk away from it, it takes about an hour from right now until when I'm like, okay, that's satisfied, I can leave it, I can go, go do errands, I can leave the house, I don't have to worry about it, I know it's lit, I know it's going to run fine. And then, uh, under normal conditions, 12 hours in between services, sometimes we got to, you know, I can... I got to be away from the house and I'll build the fire a little bit differently, which eventually I'd like to illustrate how I do that. And I can get to 14, 15, even 16 hours and still not have trouble keeping it lit after, um, after I've come back and I'm trying to service the thing and get it, you know, get it back to develop heat again. Uh, but any further than 16 hours, you can just kind of say, oh, that's, that's, not even worth trying to feed coal into it because all you're going to end up with is the mess that I had before I started today, which was a whole bunch of coal that didn't light in the stove, a whole bunch of half burnt coal that, uh, that you know, you got to pick all this out by hand. So, uh, you know, you're dealing with these little openings. There's no way to just dump the stove over or anything like that. So the goal was to try and not let it go out. So, all right, that's a pretty good cardboard fire. Now I got to make a racket. I got to cut, I got to cut this pallet up. So I need some wood. And I'm just going to give this a little, yep, just give that a little bit, a little bit less air. And I'm going to keep an eye on that to keep it lit. That's going to warm the stove up. I got enough in this pallet up. Now you don't need, you don't need a whole lot of wood to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to cut a little bit more of this pallet out, but all stuff, you know, 
pan all, really only just kindling stuff. We're not, we're not putting any fuel in here. That's getting a little bit weak. I'm gonna put more cardboard in there. These things, I don't know if you ever get these things in packaging. We get them sometimes from work. And these little, little packaging things are like, these are God's gift to, to starting fires, I think, in, in the coal stove. <laughs> Like I said, just I'm not not packing it in there trying to get this big raging fire going. I'm just trying to get the stove a little warm, get my flue pipes a little bit warm, and uh, have enough fire in there to, to get this wood to go. So I'm going to, all right, bear with me on to chop up some more of this darn pal. Alright, when my yeah, old NICAD yeah, uh, saws all there are starting to kind of die off, that's when I know I've, I'm about right. So just, to, I don't know, that was, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about an eighth of a pallet. So when I get to an eighth, oh, I'm down to embers. I got to get more, more cardboard in there. So hopefully that cardboard catches again because it's down to, down to just this little, Oh, there we go. Okay. See what's going on there. And uh, now I'm going to stack a pretty tall cardboard. All right. That's quite a bit. The thicker pieces, the stuff that's by inch and a half there. I try to get that in first because we don't really want any chunks of wood still in the stove. We're getting ready to put the coal in. We just kind of want embers in there. So any of this, oh, just to give you an idea, you saw those those three pieces that I threw in there already, and this is what's, that's about what we need plus those three pieces. So just kind of a good handful. So we'll get this other last piece of thick stuff in there. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna wait a few minutes to add the rest of that. So there's nothing, nothing fancy going on here. It's all just, you know, just big old pile fire in there. And so coal for a minute, while this is burned, I'll blab about some coal. Uh, I'm up in Northeast Pennsylvania, so coal is readily available here in all the, not all the sizes, but all the sizes that are popular. And it's, uh, it's 390 a ton this season. This is 2023 right now, or in February. And it's expensive, but for coal, but it's not expensive compared to um, oil which is my other source of heat in the house, or electric, which is the, the, the half story upstairs. But uh, the coal is, it's a, it's a hard coal. It's, it's got black dust with it, but it's not, uh, it's not really, it's dirty in a weird way. So like it makes dust in the house and it dust settles pretty quickly, but we're down the basement and we've got some toys down here and stuff the dust, it's not, it's not pervasive. It's something that I'm gonna have to clean up in the springtime, which I gotta do a lot of dusting then, but it's not, it's really not a big deal. The area that the stove is in itself, it gets pretty sloppy because I do cut the wood down here and I do, you know, the coal runs off the top of the stove and it smashes on the floor and blows little chips of it off. So you end up with this, with kind of, it's, it's, it's definitely a little messy, but I don't know if, if it's any worse than wood. I haven't burned wood myself personally, but a lot of my friends burn wood for their heat. And, uh, and I don't, know, I don't think that this is any, I don't think it's any dirtier to have in the home than that as far as what goes up the stack. I don't know. Um, I know it doesn't cause any creosote in my in my chimney. It's uh, it's clean burning in that regard as far as, you know, we want to talk about emissions. And I know it's a heavy CO2 emitter compared to natural gas. Uh, this has got, we got a pretty good little nest of fire going in there now. And so just a couple pieces in there. So I'm just going to start adding these in. And I kind of try and put them in there like a, like a bit of a teepee. And so I'll add some in and then I'll bring you back over uh, in a minute here. Just kind of putting them around in there. I kind of toss them in and leave enough room between them. I don't ever stack them. I don't ever leave them lay flat against each other like that. So. I've used up the, the wood that I've got other than this. Oh, one piece, there's a straggler there. I'm gonna use him up too. 
just right in the back like that. Okay. I'm giving you over for another look. So now we got kind of a, a sloppy TP fire going in there. And this is, now it's a waiting game. This is a matter of, I'm going to close the door up on it. See, so, it's, getting, it's getting warm. So I'm going to put gloves on real soon here. And uh, we got to wait. I usually put 10 minutes on the clock. So I usually put a 10 minute timer on and then I can walk away and do something else. So, uh, so we'll be back in 10 minutes. So we're about six minutes from when I uh, broke that, that I took a cut there, and uh, that's what's going on inside. The wood, uh, obviously, is burning great. So, got our gloves on now, but the whole stove is pretty damn hot. It's going pretty good. Something that I've noticed about burning well, not notice, but I read up and now I can tell you about it a little bit, is coal needs all of its air from underneath. And wood will take its air in from the top or the front or anywhere, it seems. Like I said, I haven't burnt wood, so I'm not gonna claim to know about it much. But I do know that with this is that through that grate, all the, all the air that the fire burns has to come up through the grate, through the bed of coal, and then go up, up through the stove and the chimney from there. So if you open this door while the stove is running, you break the, you break the suction that the chimney's making and, uh, and you lose the draw through the pot. So I don't have any top air on this stove in particular. Some stoves have a, so coal stoves, I should say, have a, an air, an air uh, vent up on the door here. And uh, I don't know if it makes a difference, never messed with them, uh, haven't seen you know, really the need for it. I did, I did through my experimentation, crack the door occasionally to see how that would make it burn. And a little crack sometimes, just something like that. Uh, it seemed to, to burn the, the gases that were coming off the coal a little bit better, but it kind of made it unpredictable. I, I, I would go away from the stove and I'd come back to, to either being out or being raging. It's, it's, I think I'm, with this stove, the way it's designed, this old pot belly, is just keep her closed up when you're, once you're away from it. Now, something particular about this stove is over by that shaker uh, where that rod comes out for the for the shaker we it, the the thing that blocks you know the, there's a big oblong hole that 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 shaker can swing through there's just a plate that covers that hole you got to make sure that that plate is in position to keep the keep the air from from sucking in the side so so you end up with a lot more air than you think you've got so that's something particular with this stove but um, with any with any coal stove, you gotta make sure the bottom, anything below the grate is very well sealed because anywhere below the grate that's not well sealed, it's gonna draw that air in. It's gonna suck it up through the fire and you're gonna get it. You're not gonna be able to idle the stove. You're not gonna be able to turn it down. Idling the stove is a skill that I'm still developing. I'm still learning. I, I, I'm getting better at it. And uh, I've, you, know, you almost have to clog the fire, if that makes sense. So what happens when you're burning the coal is that you start out with a lump like this in there. And the lump, it burns, of course, from the outside in. And as it burns from the outside in, you end up with the, with you know with this ash here that it just kind of gets, it looks like it gets coated. And so here's what used to be something probably like that. So it just keeps reducing in size, but as it's reducing in size, it's shedding that, that dusty ash. And it starts falling down through the fire pot. And as it gets lower in the fire pot, it, it fills all the, the space for the air to come up through. And that seems to be the biggest, it either, if it's done right, it burns itself out of fuel in the sense that this stuff all gets so small, uh, there's just not enough of it to keep itself lit. Or the more common way that I've had it go out is that you end up with a, with a layer of ash down low in the fire pot that the air just can't get through and uh, it gets choked for air and it goes out. So. And if you look at these, if I can, if I can break one of these, let's see if I can. It's pretty tough stuff, actually. Just call up. Oh, there we go. 
See, if I snap it open, it's uh, it's still a nice black hole on the inside, but it's got that kind of layer of ash around. It's a little bit, a little bit harder to light. I'm still going to reuse that coal. There's nothing wrong with that coal yet, but I have to have an existing coal fire to be able to put that on there. I'm not going to dare try and light this stove with that pre-burnt, whatever you want to consider it. It's like anthracite coal doesn't coke. If you were burning bituminous coal, it would coke up, they call it, which kind of gets like porous and carbony and looks kind of like a lava rock thing. But uh, this is hard coal. And this is, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's rocks that burn. I mean, that's, look at that. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So it's weird. And okay, we're, we're, we're burnt down good enough where I'm going to go poking this fire. So I'm going to grab my favorite poker tool here. This is from uh, my father-in-law. And we're going to go down in here and we're just going to kind of just even it out and flatten it out. Now it's pretty damn hot in there. So you got to, you know, it's, my face is sweating right now looking down in this into this hole. But uh, see what we're doing. We got a few, that chunk of wood right there could be a little bit. Yep, see that's, we could do better than that. We're gonna break that up. Well, it's still, still pretty woody in the middle. So maybe I can't break it up. But when we're about like that, we've almost got no flame. So we've only got a minute or three to go here. We're gonna let that burn out just a little bit more uh, before we go ahead and start adding our coal. Now, I stock two kinds of coal. I stock this big, they call this stove size coal. This is the biggest of the coal that's available at the yard that I'm at. I think the only thing bigger than that is lump coal, which that's like, you know, like you're gonna drive a locomotive down some rails or something ridiculous like that. Uh, I shovel it up at the place. Uh, so we put it in bags like this, we bring it home. One bag yields three of these coal hods and I use one hod every service. So that's a 12 hour supply of coal. And then I also grab a few bags, just a couple bags of this smaller coal. This is this is pea coal. And I use this to start the fire. I use this to, uh, to, to well, I guess bank the fire, you'd call it. So if I'm gonna try and be away from the stove for a while, this won't, it's not as porous, so it doesn't pass as much air. The whole thing with the coal stove, like I was just saying, is how much air comes up through that coal bed. The more air that comes through that coal bed, the hotter your fire gets to a point. Too much air coming through the coal bed. Uh, it actually cools the bottom coals and they blow out. The cold air blows them out more than the heat they're making. And then that cold layer that, that's half burnt out keeps coming up the pot until eventually it blows it right out. So you can have too much air, you can have too little air. It's definitely a fiddly thing. So there's a learning curve to this, but uh, and I, I can tell you as best I can figure out with this, but I am certainly still learning. And so let's see, let's see what we, let's see what it looks like in here. Ah, okay. This, this is starting to look nice. That's, that's about what we want. I'm going to, I got to, so I got to, I can see down to the grate right here. So I can see that's, that's a hole down to the grate. So I'm going to cover that up. We're going to get this, move some of this stuff around in here. So we got a nice, even flat bed of wood embers. Now we're going to put a thin layer, about a, maybe a one layer thick of our pea coal. So I got this a pot I kind of crooked up to fit in there so I can do it. I need enough job of getting out. So nice, nice cup full of that. And we go down in here. And we're just going to start kind of just shaking it around, just putting, see, we're looking at, okay, so we got a little layer. We're going we're gonna to cover that up just a little bit more. So I'm, I usually cover it so I don't see any, any of the red. So two scoops in my case. And... See, it's pretty good. Maybe, maybe just a touch more in the back. I'm gonna put a touch more in the back. A little half scoop here, and we'll shake this guy down in the back there. Now, now I know I just made what looks like a black hole. So let me let me light that up uh, so we can see what we're what we're doing in here. So that's so let's 
pretty unimpressive, but we got a nice flat layer of coal in there. And uh, this here is usually 20 minutes. I usually give this about 20 minutes to sit and uh, and then we'll come back and hopefully that's, that's nice and red hot. Uh, something interesting about this for a cut is on this stove, so right now we're like still very low in this fire pot. And oh, we can see we've got good heat coming through. We may have lit some of those coals that have already, that first layer I put in there, hopefully that's ignited now from that intense wood fire that was just above it. And we can hear it crackling and popping. Listen to that. Beautiful thing. It's the moisture coming out of the coal. I uh, definitely have some moisture in it when I store it outside. I bring it in the basin, but it still, you know, doesn't completely dry out. But, sorry, back to what we were saying here. I'm going to... So, right now, we've got coal. We're, we're about to here. So, the grate is kind of concave. So we've got our little initial layer that kind of brought us flat to here, our wood fire, and maybe an inch and a half of coal. So we're, we're, around this, we're around this level right now. It's all starting to catch. And But before we're done, we're going to walk away from the stove. We're going to fill this sucker right up, right up to the bottom of this door. And But we can't do it quite yet because we want to make sure we got a hot enough base in there that... When we, when we start adding this, this larger size stuff, this takes a lot of heat. Remember, you gotta, you're taking this rock, and this thing, I don't know what it weighs, but it ain't, it ain't technically light. Um, taking that rock, and we're gonna heat that rock up. We gotta bring this rock up to, I don't know, 1,000 degrees or something. I mean, it glows red hot, so if you know your whatever red hot is, it's uh, it's gotta get there before it even lights. So we wanna make sure we got enough heat in the bottom of this thing to make sure that that catches. Now, whenever you do a service on it, uh, I'm going to close it up so it draws the air through the fire. Remember, every time this is open, uh, the air is rather just going through the door and up out the stack rather than in through my, you know, in through the bottom and up through the coal. So I got to make sure I keep that closed now while I blab. And so if it starts, we start out with a nice full pot like this, and through the, the 12 hours of burn, uh, it, it collapses, but only a little bit. It might be down maybe an inch and a half or something like that in here. And then uh, we shake the grate. When we shake the grate, it all starts rumbling on each other. All these pieces start to kind of, you know, we get stuff like that going. And all that ash that was kind of surrounding these in a layer all falls down through. You end up with about a half a pot uh, worth of red hot coal in there bright red it's i mean you open the door your face is sweating it feels great uh it's like a sauna down here i'm, I'm sweating right now next to this thing you know, <laughs> this basement was cold before so clothes are done but um we get it down about halfway so you still always have that really massive bed of red hot coal so when you put this room temperature stuff on top it has enough energy in the bottom to light it that's the biggest thing that's how it tricks you that's how this thing tricks you when you come down here and you're like, oh yeah, I was away for 16, 18 hours, something ridiculous like that gets stuck out. So you, know, like you open her up, you're like, oh, she's red hot. We're good. Let's start putting some coal in this thing. And uh, and you start getting that coal in there. You shake it all down and you end up a little less. You end up like down here because it burnt a lot of it off. And you end up with a whole load of ash and not a, not a lot in the fire pit. And you're like, yeah, it's red hot. Let's throw some in there. And, uh, and that's when you ignorantly throw a whole pail or a pail and a half of coal in the thing. Bring it right back up full, and uh, and there just wasn't enough heat in that bottom part to put the heat into this to get it going. By the time it, by the time this sucks the heat out of that bottom and gets going, there ain't no heat left in, in the bottom part, and it just it blows out, and we end up with that. So we're not going to add this until probably the next service. Like we're not we're not going to fuss with that stuff. So I'm going to uh, I'm waiting on that base layer to get lit in there uh, this is something I normally do outside so normally uh, the ash goes out the pails the three hods go out and outside I dump the ash into my I got a garbage can a tin garbage can outside I dump that out there and then I pick up my bag of bag of coal here 
which this is this got some weight to it. I mean, I could go weigh it. I got a scale over there. But actually, you know what? Let's go on an adventure. We're waiting anyway. Oh yeah, that'll be ready in a few minutes. So let's go on an adventure for a minute. The scale. All right. So let's see if it zeroes out here. It's set at the weight of the last person and decide to see how heavy they were. And it's a little heavy on that side, so we're going to zero it out. Let's see. A little more. All right. In good shape. All right. Let's get this on there. And all right. I'm just going to lightly keep a touch on it because I don't want to. I could drop the bed. Oh, oh, look at that. All right. Now, let's see. Is it more than 50 pounds? It's more than 50 pounds. I don't think it's 100. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Definitely not 100. So it's 50 pounds plus 20 is too much. Maybe not. Nope. Oh, okay. 50, 60, 70, 70 and a half pounds. So we got 70 pounds of coal here. And 70 pounds, like I said, makes three hogs. Each hog gets me about 12 hours. So 70 pounds in 36 hours. Not the worst. So it's been a couple minutes, yep. And here we are. Now, you can see where that, that wood's burnt off. Made a thin spot in the coal, so it's burned a little bit hotter there. But uh, otherwise, we got to listen to that. Snap, crackle, pop. And... Uh, we're gonna give this a few more minutes, but I might drop a little coal right down in there just to plug that flow because anywhere that's thin has less resistance to airflow coming up through the bed and the less resistance to airflow coming up through the bed, excuse me, you end up with a hot spot. So get a little, just a little bit more here. Bring that guy up and dump him right on that forward edge just to, There we go. So we're still gonna wait again here, but in the meantime, uh, this is something I do outside, like I said, typically. And get these bags and kind of get them up on my knee and just tip them in there. There we go. And that's how I bring it in the house. Down here, if you wanna see the kind of mess it makes, is uh, there's the mess. I mean, <laughs> it's it's like black grit. It's it's not it's not like tremendously dusty. The ash is pretty fucking dusty. Excuse my language, but uh, gotta keep the damn head closed. Forget what I'm doing. I'm bullshitting too much. So, uh, all right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes again. All right, after a few more minutes, so I don't know how long we are into the process. I didn't really look at the clock when I started, but we're getting there now. We're, we're, we're most of the way through getting the stove lit. Our hot spot's still a little bit hot compared to the rest of what's going on in there, but like I said, it's not an exact science. There's nothing that critical to it, so uh, we're gonna use it. We're gonna go ahead with it. Now, just to show you what's going on down in the, in the ash pan, uh, here's our, open this guy up. And so we've we've got a, a pretty legit that that's lit the whole way up. So we've the the fire is both burnt down to the grate now because of that initial layer of coal that we put in there, and we've burnt up. So we're we're red hot for you know about that much of the fire. But we got to wait till we get like a half a pot of red hot before we just dump it in and fill it up. So we're still gonna be a little bit gentle. We've got one more layer to go in this stove before we can just dump it in and walk away. And so I'm gonna do that now. I'm a little bit concerned about when I when I drop things in from up high, they come down and they crash into that bed. And whenever you crash into that bed, it shakes it and it seems to compact it. And compaction is the opposite of what you want for airflow. Uh, so, you know, on the initial, we're gonna we're gonna put this in the front. We're gonna we're gonna do this the the calmer way, because uh, considering I'm showing how to do this, I don't want to take any risks and, and have a, a problem. This is, this is definitely a little... So we're just going to take 
some individual pieces at a time. We're gonna, we're gonna start throwing them in there. Spread them around. Another layer of the big guys. This is when it's, this is when it's handy to have your, all your throwing skills in order. So I'm just kind of making a one at a time layer in here. Oh wow, look at that piece, huh? Cool. Lay that guy over that hot spot. Lock that hot spot up. And throw them around. Just uh, if you're ever thinking about doing it, make sure you got long sleeves on. Uh, I've got the I've got the marks after where the glove is to uh, to show off how cool this cold stove is. And there we go. Same thing as before. I'm going to keep adding until I've until I've covered up all the all the red spots that I can see. And that's kind of I'm taking the flatter pieces out because, I don't know, why not, you know, flatter pieces, they kind of lay flatter, they don't roll around after I've thrown them in here. Now I'm doing a second layer, that was enough to, to cover the whole bottom of it, and Pieces. I'm not going to go crazy here. And, a few more pieces. and then if I want to, so like I said, because there's a lot of airspace between these big chunks, if I want this to take more evenly and quickly, what I can do is I can put more peak hole in there to kind of plug the holes up. So like if I were to take peak hole and layer it in there right now, it would it would kind of slow down slow down the airflow and kind of kind of keep the heat going into these because like right now like I put my bare hand in there and it's it's pretty damn hot but I'm not getting burnt because that that cold coal is starting to suck all the heat out of that out of that base layer as it's you know coming up the temperature so it can light and so it's like a weird thing like if I were to just fill this up right now if I were to fill this right to the top I can put my hand there it would feel cold it would feel like oh man there's not a bit of fire in it because that, that foot of coal is just eating the heat out of the hot air or the hot gas that's coming up out of the out of the base that's actually burning. And the yeah, answer we'll, we'll cut more pieces here. Right here. Alright, let me get you a light and I'll show you what that looks like. So there we go with no with no light other than let me block that little strip there we go. so you can see we're we're pretty much through and that's what it looks like in there this is the first time i'm looking here with a light so i can see that my right rear corner i'm going to throw a one more one more lump or two in there and uh here we are back to the waiting game again so we'll see you in a few minutes Maybe hard to see. Yep, there's that pale blue flame that you get. Uh, so we have we have a lot of heat down in underneath them them big pieces. I threw a little uh, sawdust in there from the, from when I was cutting the pallet up, and I can give that a little little poke just to oh, let that sink down in there a little. Oh. So that's all just the wood sawdust burning off of it, but give us a little light to see what's, uh, what it looks like in there. But uh, we are, we're well enough lit where I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill her up and forget I own this thing for the next 12 hours. We're ready for the last step. Like we just saw now, we got that nice pale blue flame coming off of our upper layer of large stuff. So, final step. This, okay. Take the top off the stove. Get that off to the side. And 
It's my nice full cold pail here. And we're going to start going in with this. So I'll get to the side so you can... got some void in there so it's gonna take a take the rest of this pail. Now before I open the slide I'm gonna put the top back on it. The minute you open that you get a you get a kind of odor that comes out of it. Alright so I'll uh, bring you over to see what we got here. and get this position where I have a light in my hand. Okay, so we're a little bit above above the level mark, as you can see. So I'm just going to reach in there and give it a little, little old shake down. And there we have it. Okay, we have the coal in there. We're leveled off. We're kind of filled in nice. If I wanted to, I could take another scoop of that peak hole and shake it around in the top and kind of flatten that out and fill in some of those uh, those void spaces where the air is coming up through to slow it down a little bit. But I'm not looking to cold slow the stove down tonight because we got single digit weather tonight. And that's one of the reasons why I made sure I'm getting this puppy lit. And so the last thing to do before we walk away from it, we know that we're gonna be we're gonna be good, is I'm going to Take that little that little plate that sticks out over that pin there. I'm gonna get that nice and lined up, especially now that I'm gonna walk away from it. I'm gonna set my air. Uh, I like round five seems to run run really good. I found um, I might leave it a little bit hotter than that for the for the evening because we're gonna deal with, with with some pretty cold weather here. So um, and I'll check it before I leave the house here. Um, a little bit better so set our air make sure that the the side vent is is closed well not the side vent it shouldn't it shouldn't be a vent if it's acting like a vent you got a problem so get that buttoned up get that nice and closed up on the side this is closed that's closed dampers open nice and full we're done so there you go thanks for checking this out if you've stayed all the way through this so uh, i'll follow this up with a service video Just a little P.S. on the end of this video here. Uh, it's about four hours since I've lit this sucker. Uh, I'm about to get ready to leave the house. I'm going to go out for a little while. And um, so I said I was going to check on him. I was going to bring you along for a minute. So just to show you, if I turn the lights out, um, it has a little band of red hot that goes, uh, goes around the back. It's sporadic. It's not completely around the whole stove. But... Uh, so it doesn't show up when there's any kind of light in the room, but I can see with the eye, but not with the camera. And we'll show you inside here. That's what it looks like. So that pale blue flame is that's carbon monoxide burning as the coal does make carbon monoxide and it's the producer gas. And um, this is, looks healthy. looks like we're in good shape. I'm confident to leave the house. That little, there's that little door I was talking about on the side. See how it swings and that, that will let the air in just to kind of show you what I meant by all that because I made a big deal about it in the video. Um, so yeah, we're we're all set to go out. I got the water on the top and I'm preheating my other two waters up there as I'm going to need them uh, when I service it uh, late this evening uh, just before I go to bed. So that's more, that's just more uh water supply on top of the furnace there to keep it maybe 100 degrees or so uh all right i'm gonna head out you guys enjoy the rest of your evening or whatever you're doing today watching this and uh i will be back with a video that uh when i service this thing i'll, I'll start detailing that as well hopefully everybody enjoys it thanks